Well, everybody, thank you again for joining our Metaverse Summit Growth Show, which is a series of online interviews, panels, workshops, and maybe in Metaverse conversations uh, with different Metaverse experts, uh, project builders, entrepreneurs, and so on. So today we have uh, Yong with us, uh, who is the founder and the CEO of um, Super Social, right? Could you tell us more about who you are and then maybe why did you found it uh, Super Social? Yes, you know, um, we founded the company almost two years ago with the realization that COVID accelerated a lot of the human behaviors that provide a fertile ground for the metaverse to emerge. People stayed in their home, billions of people really suddenly stayed in their home, all kinds of ages. And I think it was clear to us that the future of human experiences is going to be accelerated and be more and more in virtual spaces, virtual games, virtual worlds. And it's no surprise that games have accelerated so profoundly over the past 18 months. And we believe that this was the perfect opportunity for Super Social to start its journey really as a developer and publisher of iconic games and experiences for metaverse platforms. And so we have a big ambition of building the most iconic experiences that people are going to interact and experience in the metaverse. We decided to initially focus on a platform called Roblox, where we have been operating for the past 18 months. We have several experiences live on the platform. We have multiple more experiences in development. And of course, we are already starting to think about where do we expand beyond Roblox and are looking at other um, options. We are a venture-backed company. We have world-class investors that have been backing the company for the past 18 months since we started. We are a fully remote uh, and distributed organization. We have people working out of more than 20 cities around four countries and multiple time zones. And so we're really building a new type of organization in a new frontier. A uh, new platform, new type of users, and we're really excited to kind of bring to life the, the wider vision of the metaverse and make sure that we can build experiences that would ultimately foster creativity, encourage inclusivity, and drive prosperity for millions of people. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to put it, actually, when you are saying that you are the experience builder, because we hear a lot of uh, game builders, uh, metaverse builders, who are actually building this whole a virtual world or virtual avatars or virtual assets. But in the end, people want to be there also to experience, to have the story, right? So um, could you tell us more about your experience as a content or let's say experience creator inside of Roblox, which is kind of the leading platform in terms of uh, creator economy, right? Um, as a creator, uh, what do you think of the, of the creator uh, economy mechanism of Roblox, some pros and maybe some cons as well on the record? I think I think that Roblox is obviously the most profound platform at the moment that has consistent characteristics of a of a metaverse environment. It's very social. It has a thriving economy. It has an end to end capabilities of allowing anyone to come and build experiences for a global audience of now over 200 million monthly active users. And I think that Roblox is definitely ahead of the curve, but Roblox is, is obviously dominant with a younger audience at the moment. Majority of the users, I don't know exactly the numbers, but I would say around 80% to my assumption would be probably below age 18. So I think Roblox is an incredible entry point to the metaverse for a new generation. That generation is going to grow and is going to want to access metaverse experiences for a long, long time. And so Roblox definitely has an advantage when it comes to that. And, you know, we have been really enjoying the incredible platform and capabilities that Roblox offer creators, if it's professional developers or individual solo developers. And our vision and strategy from day one really has been in merging the two worlds of this rising creator generation, new creators that are young and thriving and, and really building these new experiences that people love and building an organization where they can come in and work together with more industry veterans. So we're really building a unique organization where people come from, you know, sort of leading game industry companies, but also all of our game developers all grew up on the Roblox platform. 
And, you know, I like how Dave Bezuki, the founder and CEO of Roblox, said that the metaverse on Roblox will be built by the, by the users, by the developers, not by Roblox itself. And so I think that's really something we, we like. This is something that we believe is exciting. And you're talking about millions of people who can really imagine what are those next generation experiences are going to look like. And so our experience on the platform so far has been very positive. Having said that, Roblox has, grown, has been growing phenomenally fast and they obviously playing a bit of a catch up in terms of the, the tools that they provide to developers in building businesses. If it's the sophistication of analytics or sophistication of advertising, I think Roblox has a great growth trajectory in terms of becoming more of a social network. So there's definitely a lot of things that I think Roblox are working on and will continue to improve over the coming years, cementing its position as a kind of leading platform and era defining platform of metaverse experiences, initially for a younger demographics, but I believe with the right experiences that demographics can continue and expand. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for sharing um, uh, the experience as a creator in Roblox. Um, but uh, in the description, you mentioned like you are starting with Roblox, but maybe you want to go beyond or what kind of other, let's say, metaverses uh, are you uh, building things on? And then maybe what other differences do you have kind of like a category? This is better for this kind of experience that is more for like social um, or uh, different to target in terms of uh, demographic, age, um, countries. I do think that we are def we're definitely keeping an eye on a lot of different platforms and environments, uh, really looking at everything, anywhere from you know the Epic Games um, platform, Nvidia is doing really interesting things, Meta and Horizon with what they're building, Unity and what they're building, Microsoft and Minecraft. Obviously, you cannot rule out Apple, who basically still very much own the access to consumer devices. And so we're, we're keeping an eye on uh, all of these different companies and what they're building. I believe that it will be a profound technology as we continue to grow our offering. Um, I don't know to what extent a company like Roblox or Epic will enable integration of blockchain and, and NFTs and so on and so forth. But I do believe that people, users, this new generation of users is going to want ever more control of the digital assets that they purchase, just like in real life. In real life, when you buy physical items or assets, I can drive my car in Columbus, Ohio, and I can drive my car in New York. I still own the car. The cities don't take my car, depending on if I leave the city. And so, and a country the same, right? And so when I land in, let's say I come to visit in Paris, no one takes my clothing in the airport in Paris and say, oh, okay, now you landed in Paris, you need to give your clothing back to the US government. <laughs> no one does that, right? And so I don't think the, the digital realm should be any different. I think when we have and we invest and purchase virtual items for ourselves, if it's in games or other social platforms, I believe that ultimately we should be able to move around and take those assets with us to different places because if the metaverse vision is going to be realized where it's a realm of possibilities that is the next iteration of human experiences on the internet something that is just more immersive more social and more expressive of our virtual personalities it makes sense that we are going to be able we should be able to take those virtual items that define who we are and define our avatars with us to multiple places and so that's kind of the longer term vision that that i have for the metaverse and what gets us excited and you know blockchain can play a really important role in that and enabling that sort of interoperability of assets to what extent all of the platforms are going to integrate that i think that's a big big question uh, all of them are trying to kind of protect themselves so i don't know if and when this will happen so it may well be that a company like super social is going to have to build from multiple different platforms and enable interoperability within those environments and wait until you know there is an open metaverse where really users are going to be able to take assets from one place to another, but I do think that's a, a very long, long-term prospect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so um, I was uh, checking the first experience that you developed uh, on Roblox, uh, is it called a uh, Ghostopia, right? So yes. <laughs> I'm really curious about the background story uh, of this experience. 
but uh, maybe in a more high level sense, um, every time, how do you decide what kind of style, what kind of experience, what kind of audience do you want to have? Um, maybe uh, just in the general sense, um, from my experience in gaming company, it's all about uh, PGC, right? Professional generated content. There is creative director and everything. Maybe you guys are kind of in the middle. Uh, PUG is like really professional uh, users. You together all the creators and talents, maybe who are not working full-time in a kind of the pipeline of a big gaming company. And there is a UGC, let's say, like just a playground and everybody create everything like VR chat or uh, like Decentraland, for example. So um, I'm wondering to which sense we need to uh, centralize the creative decision and to which sense we need to leave users choice and that's an open question of the metaverse. You know, I think every company has its own strategy and philosophy. I can tell you we have a very unique model where we don't have centralized uh, game development. We operate with a lot of autonomy in terms of the creative direction of the games and experiences we build. We give a lot of power and autonomy to the creators, to the developers, to figure out what did they believe is going to be a great concept and a great experience for users. We have a process of what type of principles we care about when we build experiences. Uh, we have a process of uh, how do we make sure we don't build same things in same genres. And so, but ultimately we are probably at the intersection of the sort of ultra decentralized creator economy where individual creators create what whatever they want. And between professional game companies where the development is very centralized. What we do, we give a lot of autonomy for the developers and the creators, and then we work with them. And we have a, an organization that is really working with all of our game developers and all of our projects to make sure that ultimately, although they have autonomy of the creative direction of the experiences, ultimately there is collaborative work in making sure that we provide the expertise and domain expertise of people who have been building games for a long time and making sure that we can support the young creators in building these experiences and making sure that they're successful. That's sort of the, the, the philosophy and the structure of how we build at Super Social. And, and I think that um, in, a, in the metaverse where, especially when you talk about platforms like environments like blockchain, where users can become also co-owners of the experiences through token ownership, I do believe that users and user-generated content would only become more important in the years to come. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's also about the quality, um, about uh, the tools that you are providing on um, other users, either professional users or normal everyday uh, users who want no code or feel code or plug and play experience, right? So um, could you also maybe tell us more about uh, your future roadmap. What is on the agenda of 2022? Uh, are they maybe congratulations to you around the fundraising? Uh, now you maybe have some talent and some uh, cash to build more exciting experiences. I mean, 2022 is definitely going to be about expanding our portfolio. We want to build more and more experiences on the Roblox platform. We're still very much focused on the Roblox platform. We want to continue and attract the most incredible developers, if it's uh, solo developers or small studios that want to work with us and potentially join us to build under the super social umbrella. We definitely look for multiple opportunities on the Roblox platform of how we can bring more amazing developers and experiences to be built under the super social umbrella for the Roblox platform. And so it's all about continuing to grow that, that footprint, both in talent and the type of experiences we're creating. And so I'm really excited about the roadmap of what we're going to release this year. And then, as I said, we're definitely starting to look at other platforms and what role Super Social can play in those environment. Why would we go and want to expand to these platforms? Nothing concrete I can share at the moment, but we're definitely looking at all of those names that I've mentioned earlier. Yeah. So uh... we also see we also see an amazing opportunity with with uh, with brands and businesses, and so. Um, um, again, nothing that I can disclose at the moment, but we're definitely looking, uh, working on some really, really amazing partnership with some uh, platinum uh, brands and, and companies and hope to launch 
some really exciting, unique, original, kind of iconic experiences on the Roblox platform this year. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe uh, without telling like the future project, you cannot disclose at the moment, but of course, looking forward to that. Um, tell us more about the development story of your uh, disclosed project. Um, for example, Ghostopia. Um, how did you design uh, the stories, the creators? Of course, inside of a Roblox world, maybe you need to fit into certain uh, stylization um, to be coherent and also maybe regarding the age, uh, the demographic of the, the audience, you uh, also took that element into consideration. So how did it go? So what- You know, again, our process is really focusing on where can we innovate? Where can we differentiate ourselves? Um, we want to make sure that we not only build for the present of the platform, we want to build for the future of the platform and where the platform is going, continuing to age up the demographics. And so I think that what we do is really, again, going back to our first principles, we always make sure that we build with lean teams. We uh, give them autonomy of the creative direction of what we come up in. That could be Gustopia or Ballista or Paris versus Ninjas. and any experiences that is already live. That's sort of the way we pursue. We we started this initiative and in kind of a framework of development called Super Social Labs, where we really bring in amazing developers from the Roblox community and we empower them to come up with the ideas, with the concept. And then we have a whole operation and a process of how we bring these ideas to life. And so we do concepts and game jams and really experiment with what we believe is going to be you know, interesting and unique. And so we're, we're obviously looking to sort of scale that activity. And as I said, build more and more original experiences, but these are the principles. Each of the experiences we've built and have, have been built in kind of the same fashion, a lot of creative autonomy to the creators, trying to work with small nimble teams, give them the support and the operational expertise that the wider company has with our industry veterans. And, and then making sure that we're building things that are really different and, and innovative. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it sounds like an incubator model, but it's more like an early stage uh, talent incubator. Um, maybe uh, the talent will come with uh, what kind of assets, maybe the idea only, or uh, maybe their previous experience, you will do the ideation together. Uh, to which stage are you really like go through the journey and adventure with the creator? We, we, we bring creators that has proven experience but don't have idea yet. Uh, so we can start completely from scratch. We bring developers who already have something that they're developing and they wanna join Super Social and build it with us. We look for developers and small studios that already have something live. And again, they wanna grow it and expand it and, and join Super Social. Um, so, we're really looking at interacting with creators and developer at any stage of their development. Um, to a large extent, the experiences we've been building so far very much have been experiences that we've created from scratch with the developers once they joined us. And we're going to continue and do a lot of these. And we're, as I said, looking to expand to sort of other modes of building with creators. And, um, you know, we just want to bring the best, the most exciting talent to build the most innovative experiences on the platform. And we are kind of very flexible with how we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm imagining also like beyond um, Roblox, um, when we are talking about different uh, other metaverses, uh, we are talking about their basic model is around the uh, land selling and land renting. So as a creator, you often have to build your either architectural story or experience on top of a certain parcel, right? So for you, is it disruptive for um, the business model of Roblox? And uh, um, would you change the incubation process or the way of functioning with a creator in this type of uh, uh, metaverses? I, I don't I don't think so. I think our principles of development would apply to any platform that we go we would go into uh, any engine we would build on. Um, I think our principles are strong and cohesive. I don't envision it. maybe there's going to be like um, small adjustments, but in principle, I think the 
the way we build would apply to any environment that we would expand to. And look, I think ultimately all of these virtual lands and all of that, it's all nice. But at the end of the day, we need to build game worlds that people are going to want to come back and play and enjoy and have fun. I don't think a virtual land is meaningful if there isn't a thriving community of players and there is a kind of exciting game world that people want to come to and, 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 and do things and play and socialize. To me, a big part of the metaverse is really about playing in a ever more immersive way. You can transport yourself from one place to another as an avatar. I think it's about socializing in a new way. It's about be, having a sense of belonging. And I think it's about expressing yourself through the avatar that you are and the type of things that you do. And th th these are sort of, in my mind, the core components. And, and I think the technologies need to serve that. It's not about the technologies. I don't think it's per se about blockchain. No one cares about a blockchain game. I think people will care about a great game world and how blockchain potentially enable them other things. I don't think five years from now, anyone is going to call blockchain gaming, blockchain gaming. No one called, um, you know, uh, internet gaming, internet gaming after five years. And so, and so I think ultimately we're going to access different metaverse experiences from different devices and the technologies, if it's web two or web three, uh, will need to enable new type of mechanics that resonates with users and communities and players. Otherwise, if you don't have users, you don't really have anything. So we keep our focus on always making sure that we are building things that people would enjoy engaging with and hopefully experiences that are really meaningful for people to play and, and come back and spend you know money on. That's sort of the, the basic premise ultimately of any product being built. It doesn't matter if it's on Roblox or if it's on blockchain or if it's on Epic. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, we need to build something great that people appreciate. It makes business sense. That's sort of the core of, of I think, where our focus is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that um, among the four uh, main topic of uh, Metaverse Summit, uh, we have like gaming, uh, 3D, and mixed reality and virtual world, um, decentralization and Web3, and social interactivity. So those other uh, blocks, a lot of people in the industry are mentioning every day, a lot of news, a lot of investment. But surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, social interactivity is kind of a short board. Like people are emphasizing so much in our kind of professional bubble, uh, the tech part, without really considering like how to really make people enjoy all this technology and interfaces, let's say, if we can use this word. And um, yeah, just the, the experience itself, right? Yes, look, I think that we get really bogged down and focused on the technology, VR, AR, blockchain, consoles, mobile. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. People will access metaverse experiences from multiple different devices and form factors. I think all of these different technologies that you've mentioned, if it's VR and AR and console, PC, we will continue for the foreseeable future to access mm -hmm. products and, and, and experiences through all of these form factors and devices. None of them is going away. People thought that uh, PC gaming is dead when, when the game console arrived. And then they thought game console will die because mobile arrived. And so, and now they're saying, oh, mobile will die because, you know, VR arrives. Maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, there's going to be a new, completely seamless personal device that will make everything obsolete. I just don't think so. Probably there will be an extension to the mobile phone. Um, and I think some of the technologies potentially could be that. But I think in the foreseeable future, all of these technologies are relevant. We're going to keep experiencing things and products and games through all of these devices. Mm -hmm. And so I think what's really important is why would keep people care about the metaverse? What is the benefit for humans, for people? That's where we're really focused on, which is mm -hmm. let's strip down the tech. The tech doesn't matter. Let's use the tech. What are the benefits for the user, for the people? And so when we think about experiences, we are really thinking about it from a place of how can we create experiences that are innately social, that are insanely engaging, that are beautifully designed, that people would want to be part of because... I believe in the metaverse, we can really express ourselves in a whole new way, socialize in a whole new way, play experiences that are completely new 
And I think that's what's beautiful. That's what's amazing for me. And it doesn't matter if you access it from a mobile phone or VR, it could enable different mechanics of the experience, but ultimately it's about, in my opinion, it's about the, those core benefits for people, which to me, again, it's about powering personal cre cre creativity. It's about fostering an inclusive environment where people can come together. And it's about driving prosperity and enabling people to not only play, but also, you know, generate wealth for themselves, potentially through the assets that they purchase. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, what you said. Um, can we uh, step a little bit further uh, to see like, what's the experience we are talking about? What I mean is like in the gaming world, we see this uh, classic gameplay. Okay, we have the quest, we have uh, different uh, level, we can go to different parts of the map. Uh, those are very classic. And when we are uh, talking about experience in the metaverse, we're also talking about like leaving people uh, the possibility of uh, doing whatever they want, not according to the scenario, right? So could you tell us more about maybe your key learnings of uh, building those experiences in the metaverse instead of like, the gaming, let's say, in a traditional way? It's, it's, it's truly, truly different. You know, I think that when you look at experiences in the Roblox platform, um, it's not like, it's, it's, it's almost like it's a social media platform that revolves around games and play. Um, typically, most of the most successful experiences on Roblox are very open play you come with your friends and you do things together. There's also some classic games, but I think the beauty of, of platforms like Roblox, and I think the, the promise of the metaverse is going to be that it's not just about games, even though I think gaming will continue to play a critical role, a role in the emergence of the metaverse. I, I still think the metaverse initially is going to be predominantly about gaming and video games, but I think the type of gaming and video games is, is, will evolve to become much more of a social experience where you do things with your friends, you gather around, you go and hang out, you just kind of explore a virtual world, necessarily having a step quest, like in a Nintendo game or, 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 you know, or an Ubisoft game, which is totally fine. I think will continue to exist. People will always want to play quest based games. I don't think it's going anywhere, right? It's just like Dungeons and Dragons have been around and it's still very popular. There are certain type of games that people are just going to want to continue and experience. And maybe there are going to be mediums where those type of games are really suitable for. To me, the metaverse is much bigger than that. It's not about a quest game. To me, the metaverse is about those social gathering, about the opportunities to express myself as a user, about the opportunities to socialize and, and, and sort of, you know, build relationships with people and, and explore things that I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. It will initially still feel like a game, but it would be a different type of game. And I think Roblox is a great example of how different Roblox experiences are. It's unlike anything on mobile gaming. It's definitely unlike anything on console gaming. It's different because it's ingrained in a social behavior and users wanting to hang out with their friends. And I think the metaverse is going to be so much more about social experiences, almost the evolution of social media than just sort of gaming. And this is why you see gaming companies building, aspiring to build metaverse, and you see social media companies like mm -hmm. Meta working on building a metaverse. And I think everyone will recognize that the metaverse is, it's about human interaction. It's about human experience. Sure, mm -hmm. there's gonna be games, but there are going to be many other things like entertainment and concerts and, and, and fashion and sports mm -hmm. events. I think there's gonna be so many more things, educational experiences. I think there's going to be so many things, many more things than just simply quote unquote video game, even though it will always continue and be quite dominant in, in that. Mm -hmm. So um, more concretely, when we are imagining maybe your users or a uh, Roblox uh, player, let's say, um, the way they used to socialize with friends, um, maybe it's like, okay, after school, let's go to a place, play, PlayStation 3, let's say, and uh, have a competition, right? And uh, in Roblox, uh, it might be changing. Um, I'm not a 
uh, expert um, listening to maybe your opinion around it, what kind of interaction can they have like in the world and uh, in their life kind of, and what will be the future interaction in that sense? Look, I think we have a whole new generation of people who are eight, 10, 12, 15 that are living in these virtual worlds. A, a, an average daily active user on Roblox spends 2.5, two and a half hours a day on the platform. That's a huge amount of time. That's unprecedented amount of time, more than any other social media outlet. Mm -hmm. You're talking about dozens and dozens of days a year that an active user spends on Roblox playing different experiences. You're talking about a generation that lives in these virtual worlds, which again, going back to my insight two years, two years ago, this is a generation that is making friends and socializes in virtual worlds. It, they will grow into a world where they want to continue and do that. There will always be an IRL in real life experience and friends. But I think the ability to make friends virtually, to explore life and the world in virtual worlds with your friends wherever they are, play games, socialize, learn, do different activities, I think mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, is only going to grow. I hope and I aim for that not to replace in real life but quite the opposite complement and amplify in real life relationships and vice versa. But I think it's on us, the creators, to make sure that there is that sort of symbiotic relationship between you know, virtual worlds and between what's possible in real life. And again, this is why I think different technologies are going to play a role in the metaverse. I don't think the metaverse necessarily is just a virtual world. I think the metaverse could also really be the layering of virtual content inside real life through augmented reality glasses. So that's why I'm saying, I think for me, the metaverse is so much more than just uh, uh, living inside a virtual world as an avatar. I think we are going to be able to bring virtual things into the real life through these emerging technologies. And it will be kind of a, quite a symbiotic relationship between all of them. Uh, yeah, so um, we are, we've been talking about user and user experience. Um, but uh, we can also talk about maybe IPs um, and brands, right? So mm -hmm. in the traditional film, entertainment, uh, gaming world, we have an IP, a franchise, and then we will try to brand it everywhere uh, to sell the product. And we will also try to sell like, um, how do you call it, franchise product, um, like Disneyland uh, entrance and everything. So uh, what do you think uh, the brands can evolve, the IPs can evolve in the metaverse? Are you thinking of bringing the Ghostopia IP elsewhere um, with more omnipresence in the future? Absolutely. I think there's definitely going to be opportunities that we're excited about bringing our existing IP from the Roblox platform outside to other platforms and other mediums. And I believe we're going to have opportunities to bring IP of other partners into metaverse worlds where we are uniquely qualified to build things. And so, and, and you know, I think it would be amazing to partner with people who have built AAA games on game console, like Assassin's Creed, for example, and, and work with these creators and figure out what does Assassin's Creed looks like on a platform like Roblox? Should we think about bringing something like Assassin's Creed to the Roblox platform or, you know, uh, or GTA or any other kind of big IP or, or uh, entertainment IP like Disney or Warner Brothers. I definitely think that there's going to be opportunities which we're really excited about building new IP from scratch, which we've been doing already, and also looking at existing IP and how do we really use that IP to build unique sort of native metaverse experiences. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Yong, for sharing the experience and the story around the super social. And looking forward to having more in metaverse experiences um, and uh, in Roblox, not only, but also in the other metaverses. <laughs> it's only the beginning. Yes, definitely. Uh, thank you for joining our Metaverse Summit uh, roadshow and hopefully see you in person as well um, in Paris in July the 16th to the 17th. That would be wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you.